Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Cheese Company will also bring you Bing Crosby every Thursday night. Present each week at this time Harold Perry as The Great Gildersleeve, written by John Whedon and Sam Moore. We'll hear from The Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. What's the grandest, most appetizing aroma that ever wafted its way out of a kitchen? Well, for me, it's always been the tempting smell of flaky, crusty brown bread or rolls fresh from the oven. And say, did you ever spread bread or rolls when they're fresh and piping hot with delicious parquet margarine? Now, there's a way to really enjoy all of your baking favorites, to spread them with parquet margarine. For parquet's own fine flavor makes other foods taste better. Of course, that's to be expected. For parquet is the quality spread for bread made by Kraft. So, naturally, being made by Kraft, you'd expect parquet to have a delicate, appetizing flavor that really satisfies. And since parquet requires only four ration points a pound, your whole family can enjoy it at every meal. Parquet is a grand source of food energy, too. And every pound contains 9,000 units of important vitamin A. So serve parquet for its own flavorful goodness and for the extra flavor it gives to other foods. Ask your dealer tomorrow for parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Let's see what's happening to the great Gildersleeve. Well, tonight our hero has taken another step forward in his public career in Summerfield. He's been elected to fill a vacancy on the school board. And having attended his first meeting, he and Judge Hooker are escorting Miss Goodwin, the grammar school principal, to her home. Well, it's been so nice of you gentlemen to see me home. The pleasure, Miss Goodwin, was all ours. You're sure I couldn't persuade you to come in for a moment? Why, I Well, think... the judge has to be getting home, I'm afraid. Busy day tomorrow, eh, Judge? Well, I don't know if you... Yes, the law is a stern mistress, a stern mistress. All those briefs to read, decisions to hand down, bills to collect. Not much time for play, is there, Judge? No, the law's demands are pretty heavy. But as it happens... So if you don't mind, Miss Goodwin, I think perhaps we'd better say goodnight. Perhaps another time? Well, now, wait a minute. I don't know about you, Gildy, but personally, I should be delighted another to... Another time, perhaps, Judge. <laughs> All right, I can take a hint. I was beginning to wonder. Miss Goodwin, this has been most pleasant. I enjoyed your story so much, Judge. You must tell me more sometime. Yeah. Well, one has many amusing experiences in the law. I remember one particular case involving litigation over a dog. Another time, Judge. <laughs> oh, quite so, quite so. Good night, Miss Goodwin. Good night, Judge Hooker. Good night, Judge. Good night. Oh, Gildy. What is it, Judge? Did I tell you that Leela Ransom is arriving tomorrow? Yes, you did, several times. Now, good night. Good night. <laughs> I'm sorry you haven't time to come in, Mr. Gildersleeve. Won't you at least sit down here on the porch for a moment? Oh, thank you. Uh, just for a moment. <laughs> you know, I envy you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Me? Uh, why would anybody envy me? I envy you your career. If I were a man, I can't think of anything that would be more exciting and more rewarding than a career of public service. Well, mine isn't much of a career, just water commissioner. Oh, but Of you... course, the department did operate at a profit last year for the first time. <laughs> yes, and that's only the beginning. It's only a stepping stone. Oh, you think so? I'm sure of it. Why, just think, already you're a member of the school board. That's quite an honor, you know. Yeah, going to have to be some changes there, too. Last year, the water department. This year, the school board. Next year? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? With the right guidance and encouragement, there's no telling how far you might go. Uh, Miss Goodwin. Yes, Mr. Gildersleeve. You're a woman. You've been around. You've had experience. Let's just say that I'm a woman. <laughs> Well, I'd like to ask your advice. Do you feel that marriage helps a man's career or hinders it? Oh, I think it's a great help to it, definitely. After all, nearly every great man in history has had a woman behind him. Well, I was asking this advice on behalf of a friend. Oh, this is a friend. Yes, a friend. Well, I've known him for quite a long time, too. He's a... Well, he happens to be in public office, too. 
Only in another town. I see. Not married. No, that's the point. He happens to be about my age, and he lives alone uh, with his niece and nephew. (laughs) He was wondering whether he ought to get married. You mean he's uh, met someone? Oh, yes. He's taken quite a fancy to a certain young lady who moved to this town he lives in. Oh. Well, tell me, what is she like? Well, she's, uh... Is she attractive? Uh Uh-huh. (laughs) <laughs> you know, she interests me, this um, friend of your friend's. Uh, tell me more about her. Well, she's young, and not too young, but just about right. Yes, go on. The only thing is, she happens to be a widow. Oh. Yes, they were very close there for a while, as I understand it. But then she left town. Now she's coming back, and the question is, well, should he or shouldn't he? <sighs> Mr. Gildersleeve, I wonder if your friend has ever read a book called Of Human Bondage. Well, he's a pretty busy fellow. I don't think he gets time to do much reading. (laughs) You recall it yourself, though, of course. Oh, yes, yes. Fine book. (laughs) And so true to life. I must read it again. Uh, But about my friend... You remember it was the story of a man, a really splendid man, who fell in love with a girl who was beneath him, and how she dragged him down and ruined his career. Say, didn't they make a movie of it? Oh, yes, with Betty Davis. Come to think of it, my friend saw it. (laughs) Then you, uh, you might just remind him of it. I'll do that. What he should ask himself is, can this woman really give him the things he wants in a wife? Is she fitted intellectually to be a suitable partner to him as he goes on to... Higher things. Well, I don't know that she's so much on intellect, but then my friend is very broad-minded. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, I think he might be wise to keep their relationship on a on a platonic basis for a while. Platonic basis? Yes, he hasn't tried that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a- at least until he's sure. Of course, I'm speaking only as a woman, but... You asked my opinion, and there it is. Miss Goodwin, I'll do that. I'll tell my friend they ought to be more platonic. That might solve a lot of things. Yes. And now, if you'll excuse me, I have a rather early day tomorrow. Yeah, I know. I've kept you too late. I don't know how to thank you. And my friend doesn't know how to thank you either. (laughs) Not at all, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, Miss Goodwin, before I go... Yes? I'll tell you a secret if you won't tell anybody. A secret? Yes. I haven't any friend. The friend is me. Why, Mr. Gildersleeve! Yeah, good night. Well, thank you, Leroy. And you? Get him. Your usual self, I see. Marjorie, have you got a kiss for your old uncle this fine and glorious morning? Of course I have. Mm. Mm. Uh. (laughs) (laughs) Look at your cheek. (laughs) Oh, here, let me wipe it off. Marjorie, I've spoken to you about that. Oh, but Uncle Darling, all the kids use lipstick. I know, I don't expect to be obeyed, but I do think you might ration yourself a little. (laughs) That's nothing. You ought to see Wally Hoff after they've been to the movies together. He looks like he's got scarlet fever. <laughs> Leroy, that's not true. Oh, yeah, look at her blush. Oh, yes. you, you made that up. No, Leroy. You just made that up to be funny. Now, children, let's not start the day with any arguments. It's a fine morning, and besides, I have some good news for you. Anyway, I wouldn't kiss Wally Hoff if he were the last man on earth. Oh, yeah, then what are you always hanging around with him for? If you two would listen a moment. Because I happen to like the way he plays piano. Is there anything wrong with that? A likely story. Can a, can a man and woman just be friends, for goodness sake? Of course they can. Leroy, eat your prunes. I ate them. Then eat something else. <laughs> and stop teasing your sister. She says her friendship with Wally is platonic. I, for one, am prepared to take her word for it. Thank you, Uncle Mort. Platonic? What's that? Platonic? Well, it comes from the Greek word, uh... uh... <laughs> well, there was this old Greek named Plato. Yes. <laughs> Uh, a historian, wasn't he, Marjorie? Philosopher. Well, a philosopher, too. Anyway, he was a great authority on, uh, Greek. Yeah. <laughs> so that's where we get the word platonic. Oh, yeah. Well, what does it mean? Eh? <laughs> well, it means when a man and a woman are friends. Uh, that is, it means, uh, uh, what would you say it means, Marjorie? Well, it means... It means no monkey business. Now eat your breakfast. <laughs> 
Good morning, Mr. Gilson. Oh, good morning, Bertie. You can take this dish if you want. I'm through. Yes, sir. Here's a bill, Mr. Gilsey. Bill? What's this? The cleaner. He finally brought your pants back. What pants? The ones you spilled the tomato surprise on the lap of. Oh, well, it's about time. By the way, Bertie, no more paper plates. No, sir. Picnic or no picnic, you understand? I ain't bought a one, Mr. Gilsey. Not since the tomato surprise. Good. Not me. Not anymore. Not after you told me. No, sir. Good. Picnic or no picnic, I ain't buying no paper plates, and that's fine. <laughs> Bertie, another thing. Tell the cleaner to submit his bills monthly hereafter. Monthly? Yes. Tell him I expect to be a very busy man from now on. I don't want to be pestered with a lot of odds and ends of bills. Just send me one, one a month. Yeah. Do you understand? Yes, sir. But, Mr. Gilsey... Yes, Bertie? The man's waiting out there for his money. Let him wait. I waited three weeks for my pants. <laughs> well, why do you expect to be so busy, Uncle Moore? Well, it might just possibly interest you children to know that your uncle was elected to the school board last night. You were? Leroy, did you hear that? Uncle Moore's been elected to the school board. Isn't that wonderful? How much does it pay? <laughs> Leroy, it doesn't pay anything. The position is purely honorary. You mean you don't do anything? Of course we do things. We do a great deal. What? Well, we meet from time to time. How often? As often as necessary. Uh, what do you do? Well, we... How do I know? We pass on things. We make suggestions. As a matter of fact, I believe we even hire the teachers. Can you fire them, too? Leroy, I know what you're thinking, and it won't work. <laughs> I'm not thinking anything, Unc. There'll be no special favors for you. You'll work just as hard as anybody, young man, and even harder. Have you done your homework for today? Yes. Have you practiced your music? Bertie was dusting the piano. Yes. Well, go practice. Okay. From now on, we're going to have things done on the dot around here. I'm not going to have time for any more nonsense. Uh, if I have to listen to much more of that. I'll go, on. It's the postman. Let Bertie go. You stick to your lessons. See if you can't improve a little. I'm doing all right. You're just barely holding your own. Uh, just put it on the table, Bertie. My goodness, the postmark's from Savannah, Georgia. Uh-oh. Well, who do I know in Savannah, Georgia? Uh, I wonder. Uh, uh, Mr. Gilsley, didn't Miss Ransom come from Savannah, Georgia? Uh, that I couldn't say, Bertie. Just leave it there, will you? Yes, sir. If it's from her, I won't read it. You'd like me to open it and find out? No. Because it's from her, I'm just not interested, that's all. I made up my mind that now on, everything between us is going to be strictly platonic. Strictly. I think you're right. Maybe the best thing to do is burn it. Uh, no, hold on, my dear. It might not be from her, either. Come to think of it, I believe there was a classmate of mine in college who used to come from Savannah. Yeah. Smith, his name was, or something like that. Uh, yeah, Smith. Uh, George Smith. Uh, Butch, we used to call him. Yeah. Might be from Butch. Uh, give it here, my dear. Just as I thought, Butch. <laughs> Let's see what he says. My darling Throckmorton, just a line to say that I'm coming back to Summerfield. I may even get there before this does. What does he say? Huh? Um, says he may be coming to town one of these days. Oh, really? Uh, let's see. He goes on here. I don't suppose you can ever really forgive poor Leela for what she has done to you. I don't ask that. All I ask is that if we should chance to meet anywhere, you give me your hand and believe that I am, as ever, your friend, Leela. Good old Butch. By George, I'll be glad to see him again. The Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few seconds. Here's a $64 question that many families have been asking lately. What's parquet margarine made of to make it taste so good? Well, that's a natural question, because parquet is winning new friends everywhere as a flavorful, nutritious spread for America's bread. So here's the answer to those questions. Parquet margarine is made by Kraft, is made to the same high standards of quality as are all Kraft products. Parquet is made from top quality ingredients, including highly refined vegetable oil and other products of American farms. It's made in modern plants as spick and span as a model kitchen. Parquet is delicious and appetizing. It's one of the best energy foods you can serve, an important aid to good family nutrition. And parquet contains important vitamin A. Yes, there's 9,000 units of vitamin A in every single pound. Parquet is a quality margarine that bears the seal of acceptance of the Council on Foods and Nutrition of the American Medical Association. 
So serve your family this delicious quality spread for bread at every meal. Ask for Parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Now let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. He hasn't been able to get his mind on his work today for some reason, possibly because of a sleepless night spent tossing from pillow to pillow and post to post. Determined not to lie awake again tonight, he drops in at Peavy's drugstore in mid-afternoon. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Why don't you put a stopper on that door, Peavy, so it won't bang? You must be a little on edge. You never noticed it before. <laughs> How long has it been that way? Every summer for 23 years. Yes, sir. 1920 was the year I bought that screen door. Never mind, Peavy. Before that, I, I just had flypaper. <laughs> Let it go. Have you got a good, reliable sleeping powder? Hmm. Insomnia? No, I want it for a hangnail. <laughs> well, now, I had one customer who used to take sleeping powders because he liked the taste, but he overdid it. Did it kill him? No, but he became quite a somnambulist. So let's not rush into this. Uh, Peavy, I'll bet you never rushed in anything in your whole life. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I've done some pretty hasty things in my time. Oh, you have? Yes, to mention only one, there's Mrs. Peavy. <laughs> the minute I laid eyes on her, at that time she was Miss Horsefall, the, the minute I laid eyes on her, I said to myself, there's the girl I'm going to marry. You did? Mm-hmm. Of course, I didn't ask her till five years later. <laughs> Peavy. Uh, about the sleeping powders, Mr. Gildersleeve, uh, maybe a simple home remedy would be just as effective. Have you tried hot milk? I want something stronger. I can't stand another night like last night. Mm, have you had a number of them, or was this the first? This was the first, but I wanted to be the last. The uh, reason I ask is a lot of insomnia is in the mind, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, anything been worrying you? No. You're not nervous about anything? No. You haven't had any bad news lately? No. Peavy, I came here for a sedative. If I want to be psychoanalyzed, I'll go to a chiropractor. <laughs> You see, sometimes... Wait a minute, Peavy. Quiet. Didn't I hear a train? Oh, the 419, I guess. Yeah, right on time. 419? Oh, I've got to go. Expecting someone on it? No, that is not exactly. I just like trains. Uh, what do you do? Go down to the station and wave at them? I'm not going to the station, Peavy. I'm going home. Well, you won't find the train there. So I know it. <laughs> house where you can practice? Well, if you'd like to move the piano upstairs. Yeah, all right. Well, you want me to practice, don't you? I suppose so. What are you looking at, Unc? Something going on next door? No, nothing at all. Well, then what are you staring out the window for? You watching for somebody? You just watch your little music. So. Walking up and down? That piece would make anybody nervous. <laughs> Why don't you learn to play something good? Something by Bach or Beethoven? Who wrote that, anyway? Bach. Must have been... <laughs> must have been one of his bad days, then. <laughs> what do you want, Unc? Something more like this? Leroy. That'll conclude your piano lesson for today, young man. Hooray! Now, leave me alone, will you? I'm going to try to get a little nap here on the couch before dinner. Okay, Unc. Sweet dreams. Hey! What? There's a taxi pulling up. No, it's stopping next door. Hey, you better come and look, Unc. What goes on next door does not concern me in the least, Leroy. Besides, I've told you time and again, it's distinctly bad manners to pry into other people's business. What do you see? <laughs> Somebody's getting out. Hey, it's the old ghost. 
You mean it's Judge Hooker. Is there anybody with him? Wait a minute. Yeah. Leroy, I asked you a question. It's her, Unc. It's Mrs. Ransom. Oh, that's so. Uh, Mrs. Ransom, huh? <laughs> How does she look? <laughs> They're going up the walk now. She's holding on to the judge's arm. Leroy, how does she look? I don't know. Why don't you come here and take a look for yourself? What do you think I am, a peeping Tom? <laughs> anyway, it's nothing to me. You better hurry. They're going inside. <laughs> Where? Oh, you missed her. Why didn't you get out of the way? Well, gosh, you don't have to knock me down. All right, if you can't keep your eyes open, make room for somebody who can. <laughs> I can't stand this. What the devil is Hooker doing over there so long? Did you say something, Mr. Gilsleeve? Uh, I'm just talking to myself, Bertie. <laughs> I'm going out for a minute. But, Mr. Gilsleeve, supper's almost ready. Don't worry. I'll be back for supper. It'll be ready in five minutes. I'll be back in less than that. Uh-huh. I will, too. <laughs> uh, i just come to a quick understanding with Leela. Get the thing settled once and for all. And maybe I can get a night's sleep. Everything's straight right at the start. Well, hello, Gildy. What's the idea of hanging around here, Hooker? Don't you know when to go home? I think I do. I've seen no evidence that Mrs. Ransom is bored with my company. Where is she? She's gone upstairs to get some papers for me. Well, you might as well come in. Don't worry. I'm coming in, all right. What have you been up to all this time, anyway? Well, we had a lot of things to talk about. What, for instance? What do you care? Yeah, I don't. All I want is an understanding with Leela. From now on, she and I are going to be on a strictly platonic basis. I want to make that plain to her. Oh. How is she, Horace? As beautiful as ever. Oh. What's she going to do? What are her plans? She's going to stay here. Live here. Booker, did she say anything about me? Not that I remember. She must have said something. No. Oh, yes. She asked if you'd been lonesome during the summer. What did you say? Did you say anything about Miss... What's her name? Miss Goodwin? Shh! Mm. Well, what would you care if you and Leela are going to be so platonic? Oh. Wouldn't want to make her feel bad, you old goat. If you... Oh. Here she comes. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> Throckmorton, it's so nice to see you again. Eh? Uh, nice to see you, Leela. Can't we all sit down? Yeah, why not? I thought you were going, Judge, as soon as you got the papers. No hurry, no hurry. Well, like old home week, huh, Leela? Yes, Horace. Uh, here are the papers. Thank you. Uh, you're looking well, Leela. Oh, not really. But you're looking well, Throckmorton. Uh, feel pretty well. <laughs> uh, rocking chair still squeaks, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, it does. Yeah, I guess I'd better be running along. Oh, must you, must Horace? You Horace? Uh, well, uh, yes, I'm afraid he must. Goodbye, Judge. <laughs> Goodbye. I'll call you tomorrow, Leela. Oh, thank you. You've been a good friend to me in my time of trouble, Horace. You can count on me. Bye, Gildy. Goodbye. Good night, Horace. Good night, gracious lady. I kiss your hand, madam. Go home, Hooker. <laughs> Well? Uh, well, here we are. <laughs> Everything's so changed, isn't it? You look different, Leela. Do I? Well, I guess it's the uh, uh, black dress. I'm in mourning, Throckmorton. It's true, then. Beauregard is... Yes. Positively? <laughs> I buried him, Throckmorton. <laughs> he was a fine man. I'm sure he was. Leela... I wanted to say something about our... Uh, oh, Throckmorton, you have no idea how Beauregard had changed. He was a different man. I declare he was. Well, how do you mean? He came back because he needed me. He never needed me before. Oh. And all these last few months before he... Yes, yes. He was so sweet and sympathetic and thoughtful. He was wonderful. Yes. Well, about us, Leela, I just wanted to I say... I always told you Beauregard was a gentleman, Throckmorton. Yes, Leela, you always did. Uh, where did you live all summer? On my family's place down south. It's just a plantation. Was Why? Beauregard... 
Beauregard practicing law down there? Oh, mercy, no. He wasn't doing anything. Nothing but just be sweet to me. Did he have any money? Oh, no. Beauregard never had a penny, the poor lion. But he was such a handsome man. Didn't you think he was handsome, Throckmorton? I, I thought he looked like a gigolo. <laughs> And I was right, living off your family. Shrockmorton, I will not have you talk that way about Beauregard. But, Leela... No one ever understood poor Beauregard but me. No one. Now, Leela, I didn't mean... I knew the real Beauregard. No one else did. He must have been a fine man, or you wouldn't have married him, Leela. Oh, he was. He truly was. Uh, there, there, Leela. Uh, here. Here, take my handkerchief. Oh, thank you, darling. Uh. <laughs> You're the only man in the world as thoughtful as Beauregard was. Oh, I'm not thoughtful. Oh, yes, you are. You're sweet. Uh, Leela, I want to get things settled between us. We... Oh, please, Throckmorton, if you knew what I've been through. Such a tragedy for poor Beauregard, a man who was so fond of animals. What are you talking about, Leela? Why, if he ever saw anyone mistreating a dog or a horse or a cat, he was furious. That's what... Made it so sad. What, Leela? Beauregard's passing. Well, how did he uh, go, Leela? He was kicked in the head by a mule. <laughs> well, we never know where it's going to come from, do we? No. Just... Five weeks ago today. Oh, you poor girl. There, there. Have a good cry on Throckmorton's shoulder. Oh, you're so sweet. Uh, so are you. <laughs> uh, what was it you've been trying to tell me, Throckmorton? Tell you? Mm. Uh, uh, well, <clears throat> what I was going to say, Leela, was that, uh, well, I think maybe you and I should have a more platonic relationship. A uh, what, Throckmorton? A platonic relationship. Oh, Throckmorton, five weeks is too soon for us to be thinking about things like that. But Leela... Good night, Throckmorton. borrowed. No, you get up back here tonight. Listen, don't you get tough with me. My uncle's on the school board now and he can get you suspended. Leroy. Oh, oh hi, Unc. Wait a minute, pig. Young man, I'll not have you using my position to bully your friends. Well, I'm not bullying him, Unc. I'm trying to get him to bring back something. What? Something he borrowed. What did he borrow, Leroy? Your electric drill. My electric drill? You tell him to get it back here in five minutes or I'll have him expelled. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> on this program was on the direction of Claude Sweeten. This is Ken Carpenter speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company, inviting you to listen again next Sunday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. This year, thousands of women all over the country are discovering what a special help with wartime meals is the product called Kraft Dinner. A box of Kraft Dinner gives them a lot of delicious macaroni and cheese for four people at only a few cents a serving. They get two boxes of Kraft Dinner for only one single ration point. And with Kraft Dinner, they cook that delicious main dish in just seven minutes. In every Kraft Dinner box, there's a special macaroni that cooks fluffy tender in boiling water and an envelope of Kraft Grated. With this handy Kraft Grated, you whisk cheese goodness through and through the fluffy macaroni in a jiffy. A very smart trick is to shape the hot Kraft Dinner in a ring mold for a minute or two, unmold on a platter and serve with cream vegetables or fish or a little meat. But just as is, Kraft Dinner gives you a mighty fine main dish. Try this seven-minute macaroni and cheese soon. At your food store, be on the alert for point-saving Kraft Dinner. This program